Hey guys, it's Julian, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make funky minimal house grooves like they are. As usual, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets and all that kind of stuff from this video in the description. And if you're a patient on my Patreon, you can get that all available now. It's already there. And yeah, let's get started. So, this is a loop you heard in the intro. We're at 127 BPM. The first sound that we have here is the cake, which sounds like this. And so what this is, is you can hear, it's just this sort of like... Sort of like hard hitting, almost like a 909 style kick. And yeah, I'm just going in here, it's playing, you can hear, I've got that one little note there. That thing, that's just kind of like adding some extra percussion to the groove. Yeah, it's a cool way to kind of make it a bit more interesting and make it not just like doom, doom, doom the whole way through. After that, I just have a bit of drum bus on this. You can see, just beefing it up, and that is it for the kick. Next thing we have here is the basses, which sound like this. So, these basses, we have two of them, they're kind of playing off of each other. We have this first one. And then the second one, which is more like plucky. So like I said, they're very similar, but they are kind of doing different things. Like the plucky bass is really bouncy. Do, 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 like that. And those kind of bouncy notes wouldn't have as much groove to them if we had it on that bass, as you can hear. So there's a good reason for having two basses here. And as far as the notes these are playing, it's pretty simple. You can see it's just actually A and E. That's the key word in is A. And you can see this is playing a G. So technically we're in A minor. And then just an A down there. So really simple stuff. It's not that complicated for the notes. It's more about the rhythm. But the sound on these two, I made them actually very similar in a very similar way. You can see this first one is made using operator. We've got a square wave. I've got a little bit of FM from a sine wave. As you can hear, it's basically a square wave with a little bit of that sine wave blended in. And then I just have those going into a low pass filter, and the low pass has an envelope on it. And that's what's making it kind of more bassy. After that, I just have a bit of saturator to kind of fatten it up. Here's without that. And then with it. And then that's the first bass. And the second one, like I said, it's really similar. I believe it's actually, yeah, it's also a square wave. It's just a little bit faster of an envelope. And you can hear the envelope's going from a little bit higher as well. And then on that one, I just have a drum bus fattening it up. There's a lot of that. And then with it. So, yeah, you can hear you can hear the difference there. So, then I have the kick and the bass in a group together as well. This is known as bussing, sort of like taking similar sounds and putting them in a group and processing them together. And what this does is it makes everything sound a lot more cohesive. And it really glues the low end, in this case, the low end. Uh, but there are also other elements that we have in groups like this. But in this case, it's gluing the low end together and just making it sound so much fatter and more cohesive. You know, it really makes your track come together and makes everything sound like it all kind of belongs in the same world when you do this stuff. So, I'll show you. There's the kick and bass bus. Here is with nothing on it. And then with the effects. So you can really hear the difference here. Like this is really helping to kind of, again, glue the kick and the bass together. Just make everything sound much more cohesive and tight and together. So the first thing we got here is this drum bus. You can see I just have this on the medium setting. I've got the drive up and the crunch up a bit. This is what's really like, you know, gluing everything together like I was saying. Like any kind of saturation or anything like that. Works really well for this because you can hear like if I get a saturator here and we'll just turn the drive all the way up. You can hear it. All this is doing is it's just turning it into one big distorted mess. And so we don't want a big distorted mess, but we do want that same kind of effect. So that's what we're doing here. We're just using the drum bus to give it a little bit of saturation to where it's doing that, but not so over the top. And you just don't notice it so obviously. After that, we have an EQ8. You can see I've got a few things going on here. First, it's just a low end and a high end boost. Pretty simple stuff. Kind of makes the low end a bit fatter, makes the high end kind of stick out on the kick as well. And then I have a cut here at 230 hertz to get rid of some money frequencies. And then I also have a boost here, which kind of helps with the punch 
on not just the kick, but also the basses. You can see if I turn that off. And then we add it on there. Yeah, it's really adding a lot of that kind of like mid rangey sort of punch or kind of boosting it. And that is it for the lawn bus. The next thing that we have here is this little stab, which sounds like this. This is really simple. It just hits on the one. This is just playing an A minor chord. Like I said, that's the key we're in. It just goes. Yeah, pretty simple stuff. So this is just made using operator. What we have here is these three different waveforms, actually, or these three different oscillators, I should say, doing some FM. You can hear it sounds like that. I've got the second one detuned a little bit, and they're all three just sine waves. And then I was going into a low pass, and then the low pass has an envelope on it. And that's what's giving it that, like, well, kind of making it deeper and more warm sounding. After that, I just have a bit of chorus to kind of give it more width and kind of like space. Here's without it. And then with it. You can hear it, it just really adds, honestly, not even just like space to the sound, but it's almost adding like a chorusy sort of texture. You know, it just makes it feel more watery and almost kind of like sampled. After that, I have a reverb, and you can see this is really short. This is just adding a little bit more space to the sound. Kind of brings it to life and makes it not just like, you know, dry and flat. And that is it for the stab. The next thing that we have here is this little effect sound, which sounds like this. So this is just something to kind of help fill in some of the spaces here. You can hear, yeah, it's just like this little effects thing that I had made a while back. And it's just hitting on the two there. It's really simple, but this is kind of like the stuff that's really important with this style. Not just Mailer's style, but also like a lot of other minimal house producers. It's like getting like a lot of stuff happening and kind of like knowing how to make that work without it being too much stuff. It's all about this kind of stuff, like having something like this, which is only hitting on the two, or having something, you know, like um, this other effects right afterwards, which is hitting like right there. You know, it's just like having these little things where it's not just going the whole way through, but it's just something quick that hits there on the two and kind of like it comes in. You hear it. You may not even notice that it's there because there's so much stuff happening, but your brain is registering it and it's making the music that much more interesting and complex. The next thing we have here is this little FM effect sound that I made, which sounds like this. So what this is, is you can see this is just playing, it's just playing C actually, and then it's sliding down to C an octave down. It's not really playing a pitch. What's happening is basically like, if you take any sound, like any oscillator, you can hear like this is in a higher octave. All I'm doing is just playing it super low. Where you can't hear the notes, basically. It's just like the waveform wobbling, basically. So that's what's going on here. You can see we just have this little FM sound. It's like three sine waves. Pretty simple stuff. And then what's happening here is I have this voice is set to one, so it's monophonic. And then I have this glide on here. And this is what I'm doing is I'm just sliding from this C down to this C. And yeah, you know, it's just kind of a creative way to make, like, an effect sound. I mean, the thing is, it can be too easy to just, like, have all your synthesized effects be, like, white noise going through a bandpass filter. So something like this, it's a little bit like thinking outside of the box and doing something a little bit different. And again, this one is very rhythmic. It's very much about how it's just happening on that one little count right there. So yeah. After that, I just have a bit of echo. You can see I have this doing dotted eighth notes, but I actually have the feedback down super low. This is only doing one little delay. Or I guess like two, but only one that you can really hear. And yeah, this is kind of the goal here. Again, we don't want this to just be ringing out the whole way through. I just wanted it to have something a little bit more. I felt like it made it sound kind of interesting. And I like how that was fitting into the groove there. And then after that, I just have a bit of drum bust. This helps to get it from like just sounding like a dry synth and makes it more kind of textured and more like an actual effect sound. And yeah, the next thing that we have here is this little chord, which sounds like this. So this is actually a pretty simple sound. You can see it's just playing an A minor chord and then I've taken the minor third, put it up an octave. And this is also just hitting on the two like that. So it's kind of like Fitting in with the groove. And for the sound on this one, what we have here is we have this FM kind of thing. 
I've just got four sine waves. Really simple. You can see I've got the attack up on all of them, so it's kind of like. That's how you can hear it's like building into the sound. We've also got those detuned a little, and we've got them at different course and the course pitch is at different settings. I also have this LFO here, which is on the volume of oscillator B. So that's fading in, as you can hear, just kind of like bringing it to life. You know, it makes it a lot more interesting. So it's kind of like building up like that, and then it stops. And yeah, that is really different side of the synth. Like I said, it's not that complicated. After that, we just have a bit of chorus to kind of give it some more dimension, and then. I have this echo here as well, so this is... You can hear it's just like a really fast echo. I've got it unsynced from the BPM. And yeah, and then after that we just have a bit of drum mass to give it some more texture and kind of beef it up a bit. And then I have an EQ8 cutting out the lawn, and that is it for that chord. Next thing we have here is this little vocal stab, which sounds like this. This is really simple, it's just a little vocal stab. That just hits on the one there. And then I've got a band pass. Again, this is just one of those extra little, like, small details that makes a big difference. Because when you have something like this that's hitting, like, right on the downbeat like that, it, like, pulls you back in right there. You know, it really, it really works for the groove. So, yeah, like I said, really simple. Just a little vocal thing. You can even sample yourself just going, like, huh, or something like that and put it on there. But definitely a nice little thing there. Next thing that we have here is the percussion and what we've got going on here is we have a ton of percussion as you can see I basically have it all like this is all just the little like background percussion All of these tracks here basically we have a ton of different sounds You can see like we have these snares for example And then I have all these different sounds which I've kind of named <laughs> different things such as Click, clock, flick, perk, stuff like that. And basically, yeah. It's just a ton of different percussion sounds. Like, the thing with this style is you just need to have a lot of stuff in there. And the key is having a lot of little stuff like this. Like, if you listen to all these sounds, they're not very big, save for, like, the snares. You know, it's all just little, like, clicky, sort of, like, small percussion like that. That's what you want. The key here is to make a big sound by combining a lot of small things. So, yeah, that's what we have going on here. I mean... What I recommend doing is maybe try taking, like, Foley percussion, or you could try... You know, even just going through percussion sample packs and just finding, like, little sounds and try shortening them and making them, and pitching them up and making them smaller. And again, just building up, like, a ton of little small percussion like this. Like, this is really what I was noticing. When I was hearing Megalore Shrek's, and you can hear, like, if we turn all that stuff off, the groove is still there. But the percussion is really bringing it to life. And you'll also notice, too, like, when we turn it all off, this is another thing, kind of like the theory, I guess, of how you would put all this together. Like, if you listen to this, when I turn it all off, it's not like the whole song is gone. You know, the groove is still there for the most part. It's just like all this percussion is kind of like the final instrument. Like, I'm looking at these la all these different percussion layers more as, like, their own, like, one instrument as itself that makes any sense kind of like you would have the kick or you'd have the bass or you would have the chord stab or something like that this is all like one sound to me if that makes any sense but yeah so i mean like i said we just have a ton of different sounds we got snares we got clicks we got clocks you know we got flicks i have this little drum rack here as well with this these two little percussions i mean it's just a ton of stuff and like i said like there's really not a lot of method to the madness you just kind of like put all these different sounds together and just try to fill up the group and really, you know, make something cohesive. One thing you will notice is a lot of these are kind of playing off of each other. And playing off of the groove of the basses and stuff as well. That's more what it's about than it is necessarily, like, exactly the sounds that you select. And another thing you'll notice here is there's a lot of swing. I can show you with the snare. If you look at, I'll turn on the 16th note grid. This is how everything is, even the basses. You can see, like... Yeah, those are not perfectly on the grid. So we have everything swung a little bit, you know, pushed a little bit back. It just makes it more groovy. And kind of 
kind of more funky like that. So yeah, that is all of that percussion. I also have a clap here. You know, pretty simple stuff, just sort of like a nice cracky sort of minimal clap. I also have some hi-hats. We have like this one playing on the upbeats. You can see I shortened that a bit with the amplitude envelope. You know, with this style, you want like the sort of shorter, sharper hi-hats like this. I also have, speaking of short hi-hats, this one. That's just constantly going tick, 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 like that. So, yeah, you know. Pretty straightforward stuff, honestly, when you sit and break it down like this. So then I have all that percussion in a group as well. Just like I was saying with the kick and the bass, you know, it really helps tie everything together. I'll show you. Here's with no processing on the percussion group. And then with all of it. So it really helps when you have all these sounds. Like I was saying, when you put everything through the same processing at the same time, even if it's like vastly different sounds like this, they're going to sound more cohesive and it's going to make everything sound more together just because you're putting kind of the same texture on everything at once. So the first thing we got here is this drum bus and the saturator. These are both kind of working together to saturate everything and just really like tie it together. Again, here's without these. And then with the drum bus, you can hear it really like evens everything out. And then the saturator. Just gives it that last like warmth and kind of power. And then after that, we just have the ZQ8. And with this, I'm just boosting the high end a little bit. You can hear it just improves the clarity a little bit. And yeah, that is it for the percussion. And that is also going to be it for this one, guys. So thank you very much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've got a bunch of requests to do this one. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Make sure to hit that little notification bell as well so you never miss one of my uploads. As always, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets and all that kind of stuff in this video in the description. And if you're a patient on my Patreon, check there if you haven't because it's already available. Thank you so much, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.